Hi there. Um, Hi. Who are you? <laughs> I'm uh, Vivian. Uh, I'm from London. Um, I, my background is in theatre and I recently decided to move to Serbia. I'm half Serbian, so there is a reason for that. Um, but me and my partner felt we needed a change. We wanted a different kind of lifestyle and uh, needed, yeah, felt like Serbia was the right option for that. Okay, and you've uh, set up a project there. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we've we um, bought a piece of land and uh, I really wanted to do some gardening and I really wanted to grow my own food and, and uh, live much closer to the land and closer to nature. And um, I heard about permaculture a long time ago and I did a, I was been wanting to do a course for a while and I found a course in Serbia, which I did last May, and that really inspired me. And so we started implementing uh, permaculture design on our, on our property. Okay, so what's the kind of thinking behind the project? What are you trying to achieve? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> we are... First of all, we are setting up a uh, an NGO, rather a not-profit organisation which works in the arts and theatre, specifically in international co-productions. But we also want to open our property to um, artists and artists um, uh, other people who need to sort of get away from l busy city life very often and find a, find a place where they can create work and get in touch with the basic things of life. Okay, um, and you kind of mentioned that's kind of you know it's informed by the art. It's kind of pro a project that's bringing together kind of arts and permaculture. How do you see those two coming together? This is kind of an evolving thing, I think, but um, I think it's a lot about, obviously, creativity. There's creativity in arts and in permaculture design and gardening. It's, it's you know, it's even creative making and having a cup of tea in the morning. So it's about the way you... For me, it's about the way you approach both of these things and the kind of your starting point. So looking at what you have, what materials you have or what resources you have, and then working with what you've got, whether that's your skills or um, actual material resources around you, um, and putting it together and seeing the alchemy of what occurs. Okay, cool. Um, have there been any particular challenges in setting your project up, or day-to-day? -day? Yeah, there are many challenges. <laughs> the challenges are very often... Uh, lack of uh, needing help, needing mm. more hands very often. There's often you have a big idea and it's very hard to make manifest because um, you simply need help, you need hands, you need uh, human resources. Mm. <laughs> That's often the, the biggest, the hardest thing. Um, the easiest thing to come by, but uh, often the thing that's lacking. Mm, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so... Um, any sort of particular conscious design process? Would you feel it's been consciously a permaculture design project? Um, I think I have definitely had had that in the back of my head all the way along. I mean, we've really been looking at... Um, because our, our property is a bit unusual, it's not the kind of place that I, you would necessarily start a permaculture project and say this is the perfect spot. Mm. Um, it's kind of working with what you've got. So I think we, I've really done a thorough analysis of the land and looking at, the, looking at um, the, the sun and looking at the weather over the year and looking at certain little mini microclimates within that property and trying to make the best of, you know, where, there, where there's a lot of sun, where there's a lot mm -hmm. of shade, and really um, working that into the design. And also the whole concept of zoning, I've definitely mm -hmm. applied to um, our property. In a way, it, a lot of these elements are already in the design of the property when we bought it. Um, so, for example, that all the houses in the village were facing south anyway, and mm -hmm. there's a sort of... Um, yeah, there is, in a way, a kind of embedded uh, design already there which is a good starting point. Mm -hmm. And something that particularly interests me is kind of how permaculture can kind of affect community, you know, be positive for community. Do you feel your project is something that's going to be benefiting a wider community? 
Well, we're doing a lot of things with locals. Um, I mean, you really need your neighbours and your neighbours need you. And where we live, we're quite far from a lot of other people. So there's a lot of exchange of resources and knowledge. I mean, we're the newcomers there. So we sort of have turned up and said, OK, who can who can help us? Who can tell us what's, um, what's a good thing to plant here or what kind of pear tree suits this particular soil? And um, also, we really want to share... Uh, for example, the work that the artists that come to us, what they create, there's going to be opportunity to share that with the local community. Um, and uh, we also are going to have some shows happening on our property as well, which involves like a little mini outdoor theatre. So that's also something um, definitely for local, local people and promoting the local area. We have also um, a couple of documentary films um, that we'd like to make, which are combining sort of the arts and environmental issues and this is all going to be involving local community so that is a big part of what we're doing yeah great that sounds fantastic okay well wish you all success with your project thank you very much thank you mm -hmm.